When you think of the Pan-Africanism movement, you think of the late great Marcus Garvey. He founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA, and the African Communities League, the ACL. He advanced the ideal of the Pan-African philosophy, which inspired a global mass movement. This Jamaican-born political leader, publisher, journalist, entrepreneur, and orator intended persons of African ancestry in the diaspora to redeem the continent of Africa and put an end to European colonialism. He was influenced by Hubert Harrison. He incorporated the Black Star Line of Delaware, the Negro Factories Corporation, with the help of Henrietta Vinton Davis, the Black Cross nurses that helped provide health services and educated the people of African descent. Seeking to develop Liberia, which was established by the American Colonization Society in the 19th century, Garvey launched the Liberia program in 1920, intended to build colleges, industrial plants, and railroads as a part of an industrial base from which to operate. Born in Trinidad, 1869, Henry Sylvester Williams was a Trinidadian lawyer, counselor, and writer. When he was young, he moved to North America for further education and later to Britain, where he started the African Association, which challenged paternalism, racism, and imperialism. Its whole purpose was to protect the interests of anyone claiming to be of African descent. In 1890, he became the founding member of the Trinidadian Elementary Teachers Union. In 1893, he moved to Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, to study for a law degree. While living in Canada, he became the co-founder of the pioneering and innovative Color Hockey League. He wrote the newspapers and journals on matters touching Pan-Africanism. In 1897, he formed the African Association. He renamed it the Pan-African Association. In 1900, he organized the first Pan-African conference held at Westminster Town Hall in London. On the 28th of June, 1901, the Trinidad branch of Pan-African Association was formed. In 1903, he went to practice as a barrister in South Africa, becoming the first black man to be called to the bar in the Cape Colony. C.L.R. James was an Afro-Trinidadian historian, journalist, and socialist. In 1910, he won a scholarship to Queen's Royal College, the island's oldest non-Catholic secondary school in Port of Spain. After graduating in 1918 from Queen's Royal College, he worked there as a teacher of English and history. In the 1920s, among the students he taught was Eric Williams, who became the first prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. In 1930, he became a champion of Pan-Africanism and was named chair of the International African Friends of Abyssinia, later renamed the International African Friends of Ethiopia. This group was formed in 1935 in response to the Italian fascist invasion of Ethiopia. Leading members were Amy Ashwood Garvey, Jomo Kenyatta, and Chris Braithwaite. The IAFE transformed into the International African Service Bureau in 1937. James edited its newsletter, Africa in the World, and its journal, International African Opinion. The bureau was led by his childhood friend, George Padmore, who would be a driving force for socialist pan-Africanism for several decades. George Padmore, born Malcolm Ivan Meredith Nurse, was from Trinidad. A journalist, author, and Pan-Africanist, he left Trinidad in 1924 to study medicine in the United States, where he also joined the Communist Party. In 1924, he attended Fisk University, a historical black college in Tennessee. Later, he attended Howard University, another historical black college located in Washington, D.C. During his college years, he became involved with the Workers' Communist Party. When he engaged in the party's business, he adopted the name George Padmore, 
compounding the Christian name of his father-in-law, Sergeant Major George Semper, and the surname of his best friend, Errol Padmore. He was later barred from the U.S. due to his involvement to the Soviet Union and the Communist Party. In 1934, he moved to London where he became the center of a community of writers dedicated to the Pan-Africanism and African independence. His childhood friend C.L.R. James was already there writing and publishing. The International African Friends of Ethiopia also developed into the International African Service Bureau which became a center for the African and Caribbean intellectual anti-colonial activity. He wrote dozens of articles for Nkrumah's newspaper, the Accra Evening News, and wrote a history of Gold Coast Revolution in 1953. With Dorothy Pitzer, who was a writer and secretary, Padmore encouraged the leader to write his autobiography. Nkrumah published his autobiography in 1957, the year the Gold Coast became independent Ghana. Joseph Augusta Antonov Furman was a Haitian anthropologist, journalist, and politician. He wrote the book on the equality of human races, a rebuttal to the French writer, Arthur de Gouvenot's essay, The Inequality of Human Races. It asserted the superiority of the Aryan race and the inferiority of blacks and other people of color. Furman was one of the founders of the idea of the Pan-Africanism at the end of the 19th century to combat colonialism in Africa. As a candidate in Haiti's presidential election, he stated that the Haitian state should serve in the rehabilitation of Africa. Along with Henry Sylvester Williams and fellow Haitian Benito Sylvian, he was the organizer of the Pan-African Congress in London in 1900. That particular conference launched the Pan-Africanist movement. W.E.B. Du Bois attended that conference and was put in charge of drafting the general report. After the conference, five Pan-African Congresses was held in the 20th century, which eventually led to the creation of the African Union. Antoinette Furman devised between 1875 in 1898, a Caribbean Confederation project, which envisioned the unification of Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico.